Hello and welcome to a short look at our 2018 half year results. I will give you the highlights, then Stephen Pearce, our finance director, will cover the financial detail and then I will come back and reflect on our strategic progress. For the first six months, we've delivered another strong performance, driven by consistent improvements at our operations and a stronger price environment for many of our products. On productivity, We've increased by 27% in 2017 alone. We saw a further two percentage point increase in the first six months of 2018. Looking back over the last five years, that's now an 82% improvement from where we started back in 13. In terms of production volumes, even though we've gone from 68 assets in 2012 to 36 today, we are now producing 8% more physical product than we used to when we were back having twice the assets. That is the clearest way to explain the fundamental change in the quality and the performance of our business. Looking at this half year, we've delivered a 6% increase in copper equivalent production volumes compared to the first half of 2017, helping us to deliver $400 million of cost and volume improvements over the period. That's out of the $800 million that we're targeting for the full year. We are continuing to drive a major operational turnaround at Anglo-American, unlocking our full potential from a significantly upgraded portfolio of assets, and we believe there is still significant additional upside within the portfolio. Through further operating gains, relentless innovation to reset benchmark performance and practices, and disciplined allocation of capital, to our wide range of organic growth options that we have across the business. While many aspects of our performance have been positive, we must still reflect on safety. And yes, we've improved in safety, but we're still not where we need to be. We simply cannot accept unsafe work practices. All of us are determined to achieve zero harm through the management of safety risks in all of our managed operations, and we've shown that it is possible. So far this year, I'm sorry to report, that we've lost three of our colleagues, all in our South African operations. This simply shouldn't be the way it is in our business. Yes, we've been implementing our learning from incidents and operational risk management programs in terms of delivering our vision on zero harm, but there's still a lot more to do and we've got to get there quicker. Stephen will now provide more detail on the financial highlights. It's been a strong first half and the numbers really speak for themselves. We've delivered what we said we would, a balanced performance, healthy returns to shareholders, we're investing in the business in a disciplined fashion and we are continuing to strengthen the balance sheet. So from a balance sheet perspective at the end of June, we had reduced net debt to $4 billion, an 11% reduction. This takes us to a 0.4 times net debt to EBITDA ratio at the bottom of our targeted range. And that's a great position to be in at this stage in the cycle. I'd also like to highlight that we've continued to restructure our debt profile in recent months aligning our bond maturities more closely with a longer term nature and investment horizons in our mining business. So turning to profitability, the first six months of this year, we generated underlying EBITDA of $4.6 billion, up 11%. So what were the drivers of the EBITDA increase? On the positive side, we saw higher prices for many of our products and the cost and volume work we've been doing also had an impact but input cost inflation and foreign currency movements provided some headwinds. At Ministrio, we're on track with our inspection and repair work on the pipeline, and we expect to restart in the fourth quarter, which should provide some positive momentum as we start to plan for 2019. Finally, and importantly, with the increase in underlying earnings comes an increase in the dividend we pay to our shareholders. We've therefore nudged up the interim dividend to 49 US cents per share for the first half, in line with our 40% payout policy. 
We are pleased with our consistent progress that we've again demonstrated in the first half. And we're focused on continuing to improve and grow our business for the future to deliver superior value to our shareholders and all our business stakeholders. In addition to our strong financial performance in the first half, we're also announcing our approval to develop a major new copper project. Kiaveco is one of the largest undeveloped copper resources in the world, located in the south of Peru, with a current reserve life of 30 years and potential far beyond that. We expect Kiaveco to produce on average around 300,000 tonnes of copper per year for the first 10 years of operations. The even better news is our operating costs will be in the first quartile of operating costs versus our competitors at around $1.05 cents a pound. After several years of extensive preparatory work and working with our partners at Mitsubishi, we have every confidence that we will deliver Kiaveco on time and on budget, with first copper production during 2022. The quality and the long life of our mineral assets are the foundation of our global business, today and for the future. As a world-class project, Kiaveco further enhances the quality of our business and we will be developing it responsibly, sustainably and for the benefit of all. Our results for the first half show that we are delivering on our strategy across the board and we're doing it consistently. Building upon the already major operational turnaround, we see so much further potential to deliver enhanced returns from the portfolio and utilising the capabilities that we bring. With our business model and our relentless focus on innovation and business improvement, we will reset our own performance benchmarks now and into the future. In terms of growth, we're investing responsibly for the future across our entire value chain, from mineral discovery to delivering our products to our customers, to deliver sustainable and enhanced returns to our shareholders. Today, as we move forward with Kiaveco, we are excited about the opportunities we see across the business and through the cycle. Thank you. <music>